peace of our Lord Jesus be with you. And also with you. Bless the Lord who forgives our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Welcome to our Ash Wednesday service this evening. What a beautiful opportunity we have to join together. For those of you joining us this evening live, as always, we invite you to let us know that you are present with us and with this community. If you would kindly uh, uh, comment here in the, on the Facebook feed, if you are watching this at a later time, maybe uh, you are watching this Thursday morning or later, uh, we invite you to do that as well as continue to see all of those who have participated in this worship service. This evening is the beginning of our Lenten season, and we'll get in a little bit later about what Lent is about, but it is a little bit different than what we would normally be doing. We do not have the traditional ashes. I uh, will not be coming through your computer screen to give you a cross. And so what we are going to have tonight is an ashless practice of Ash Wednesday. And what that means is I would like you to grab just at some point in time, uh, maybe while the hymns are playing in the background, find yourself a small piece of paper and maybe some kind of marker or pen to write with. That will come in handy when we get to that point in the service as we enter this season. Uh, just a reminder, as we begin this Lenten season, we are going to be doing our book study on the Marks of Hope, written by Matt Rawl. That will begin tomorrow night. If you did not sign up, it is okay. You can still join us for this study. And we can also still order you a book if you are interested. The books are $7. Uh, the, the, we will be doing it on Zoom. And the link for that, uh, it was in the announcement email this last Monday. But if you didn't get the announcement email, that's okay. I'm going to put the link to the Zoom session on the Facebook page tomorrow morning. So look out for that. Uh, and and uh, we would love to have you join us uh, as we have this discussion time around. It, it, it's around a book, but really, if you haven't read, it's fine. It, it's just going to be a general discussion about hope in this time. And so I invite you to come and to join us for that. As we enter worship tonight, let us, let our hearts be comforted in this opening prayer. Loving God, be with us gathered here today, that we may feel your presence that we may fully enjoy the gift of love which you gave us. Take away our sin, take away the sin of our community, our nation, and our world. Grant us the peace to face our futures. In your loving and holy name we pray. Amen. And now let us join together in our first hymn this morning, Gather this evening, Gather Us In.
Oh, there we go. Our scripture lesson this evening is from Joel 2, 1 through 2, and 12 through 17. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their light has never been from of old, nor will it be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent, and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering, and a drink offering from the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call it a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants, at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be among the peoples? Where is their God? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each one of our hearts be holy and pleasing to you, that through your word for us tonight, we would enter this holy season in repentance and humility to journey towards the cross for redemption and resurrection. In your son's name we pray. Amen. So tonight we enter the Christian season of Lent. However, for many outside of the more liturgical church models, Lent is not really common practice. In fact, growing up in the Methodist church, and we did Lent every year. Every year we had a, a pancake dinner on Tuesday night, then we came back to church on Wednesday and got our ash crosses on our forehead. And then for the next 40 days, I would give up vegetables, eating healthy, doing things that generally made me feel... No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Normally I would give up chocolate, uh, do silly things that youths did when, during Lent. However, it was not until I got to college and I began to interact with friends in other denominations that I realized that Lent is not actually a common practice. It's a foreign practice in, in, in many denominations. And so this season may seem foreign to some of us. But I think it is an important season for us to practice as we consider what we are about to go through and what is waiting on the other side of this journey. This is not a mark against communities that don't practice Lent. Don't hear it that way. But, but in the United Methodist tradition, as we practice Lent, we practice it as a season of preparation. Preparation for Easter. As we look towards that holy holiday, and we get ourselves ready for what awaits us on the other side. Here is the description of Lent from our United Methodist website. It says, Lent is a 40-day, not counting Sunday, so it actually ends up being 46, which begins on Ash Wednesday and ends on Holy Saturday. That's the day before Easter. Lent comes from the Anglo-Saxon word lengthun, which means lengthen, and refers to the lengthening of days of spring. The 40 days represents the time Jesus spent in the wilderness, enduring the temptation of Satan and preparing to begin his ministry. Lent is a time of repentance, fasting, and preparation for the coming of Easter. It is a time of self-examination and reflection. In the early church, Lent began as a period of fasting and preparation for baptism by new converts and then became a time of penance by all Christians. Today, Christians focus on relationship with God, growing as disciples and extending ourselves and often choosing to give up something or to volunteer and give of ourselves for others. And you see, this is why I enjoy Lent. It's a restart for my New Year's resolutions, if I'm being completely honest sometimes. But even more so, it is because it refocuses and regrounds us into this time as we examine our nature as Christians. We take all that has taken place before us, and I mean that even includes like all of our years of life on this earth, and we consider what God can do with us over the next 40 days to make the time after that even better for our relationship with God and our relationship with God's creation. We commit and covenant to engage in growth of that relationship. And even though sometimes we may think of it as a revisit of our New Year's resolutions, it is even better because we are focusing our intentions on our relationship with God. In whatever fasting you, can, you discern to do during this time, I encourage you to consider how it impacts that relationship. And you know what? The scripture passage that we read tonight gives us this opportunity of reflection on how we enter this time of fasting and preparation. It sets the stage with one simple phrase. Yet even now. 
You see, when we look at the whole narrative of Joel 2, when we look at those verses that Taylor didn't read, and she didn't read them on purpose because I told her not to because they're not in the lectionary. But if we read those verses and we look at what's happening in Joel 2, 1 through 2, and then in those subsequent verses of 3 through 11, we see that the blowing of the trumpet that happens right there at the onset of chapter 2 is a signal and a call to battle. It is a signal and a call to arms that something major and chaotic is about to happen. The Israelites are being shown an act of divine vengeance when we read those first number of verses. And we see and encounter the details of this battle that is set to happen. And yet, and yet, as we move to verse 12, we begin to see that this act is not truly the act that God desires. Rather, we encounter that faithful phrase, yet even now. This marks a change and a transition in the nature of, God, of humanity's interaction with God in this instant. If we follow the lead of the prophet Joel, of the prophet Joel's proclamation here, we find a God who wants to be in relationship with us, not destroy us. You see, many times we try and paint this picture of a vengeful God. And we try to use the first half of this passage to portray this imagery that God is trying to beat us into submission. But over and over we see in the midst of moments when we witness what could be God's vengeful abilities, that God's true actions, God's true calling stands in stark contrast to that, destru that destruction. Over and over in the prophets, there is this picture painted of chaos. And then there is this nature that yet even now, when we turn to God, there is so much fruit waiting for us on the other side. Yet even now presents a case for us that when everything, that when everything appears to be chaotic, that when everything appears to be out of control, who do we turn to? We turn to God. We turn to God. And we hear in Joel 13, and told that God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and relents in punishing. A blessed image, made known through our ability to take the moment and time to connect with God. The author recounts God's all-present grace, but notes that our engagement with it is what leads us, ourselves, in this true transformational change. You see, in times of doubt, in times of despair, and in times of suffering, in times of chaos, Ash Wednesday stands as a reminder of that very nature in our world. We are reminded tonight of our need for God's divine grace, for God's divine presence in our lives. And it is those ashes, it is that dirt that reminds us that we are humans, we are not God. And that we are called to turn to God in our times of need. We are called to repent of our misgivings and to be led by God. To be led by God's grace and God's love in the way that God calls us to be. And so in that, we're encouraged to do what Joel calls, uh, calls those in his time to do as well. We're called to take this time and to firm up that foundation of our faith. You see, we do not necessarily fast from things in this time because... They feed our own ego. We do not fast from things because they generally make us healthier. But we fast from things that get in the way and stand between our relationship with God. We find those things that can help to strengthen that relationship with God and God's creation. You see, God wants us to turn to Him in these times. 
And what we are giving up here during Lent, what we are looking towards, what we are fasting from, and what we are taking on, helps to revitalize this relationship with God. Ash Wednesday is a restart to our lives. It is a restart to that relationship. That we can look at the chaos and everything that is behind us. And we can take this time to look and to focus on what our relationship with God looks like going forward. We as individuals in a community bind ourselves together and latch ourselves to the promise of God through Christ to grow and to mature that relationship that we have. What are you giving up in this time to revitalize your relationship with God? Is it those sweets of some kind, some kind of bad food to, to really enhance your healthy relationship with your body as a means of honoring your promise to God and to care for yourself? Is it fasting from social media, as I see many of my colleagues doing, in order to either carve out time in your day to engage in spiritual disciplines or just to lead away from harmful and divisive rhetoric that, comes to, that has come to define those spaces? Or are you fasting by addition? In that, are you adding practices and creating space in your day to gain greater purpose? Friends, it has been a year of all years. As we stand here this Ash Wednesday, we are a little less than a year from what I like to say when the world ended. And our lives have changed Pretty much forever. Friends, I think we need an Ash Wednesday. Because yet even now, in the midst of COVID, in the midst of division and politics in this country, in the midst of all of the things that we are going through, yet even now, we can turn to God we can fast, we can repent, and we can seek God's wisdom in this time. As we journey towards the cross, let us take these 46 days leading to the resurrection to reconnect ourselves with the grace and deep understanding of what it means to share grace with the world. How will you fast? I'm not going to tell you, but I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to encourage you to find ways to build that relationship. Yet even now, in all of this, we encounter God to grow in love and grace to share with the world. Amen.
brothers and sisters in Christ. The early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's Passion and Resurrection. And it became custom of the church that before the Easter celebration there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled and pen by penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. I love that line. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. And so I invite you, in the name of the church, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. To make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our moral nature, let us bow before our Creator and Redeemer. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these signs of ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now I would like to invite you to grab your sheet of paper and, and your marker of some kind. And what I want us to do this evening is I want us to have a moment of Ash Wednesday reflection. I want us to consider those ashes that we would normally get on an Ash Wednesday, during an Ash Wednesday service. For so many of us, those ashes become sometimes a sign that we have been to church today, but a sign nonetheless for us to be able to begin this season of Lent. However, and I don't know about you, but for me, I almost hate to wash it off at the end of the day. Because I think I need that reminder over the next 40 days of what has happened here tonight. That we remember that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. To remember our humanity, and to remember our need for divine grace. Yet even now, we turn to God. And so I invite you with that pen and paper to make the sign of a cross on that paper. A sign that cannot be washed away. A sign that cannot be getting, gotten rid of. And then I invite you below that cross, if you've created room, it's all right if you didn't, just find space on the paper. I want you to write that way that you are desiring for your relationship with God to grow in this time of Lent. Again, whether it is through fasting, whether it is through spiritual discipline, self-examination, or repentance. To write that down. That these ashes, that this sign of the ash cross that you would carry it with you. Leave it in your Bible this Lent. Leave it in your devotional book that you use. Leave it in a place that you can remember. It. So that you can remember during these 40 plus days the covenant that you are making with God for this time. And the reminder that you are dust. And to dust you shall return. Amen. As we continue on in our service, as we continue into this time of Lent, we mark the beginning of Lent with a time of confession, a time of asking and repentance. 
And so this evening we will be using a responsive reading from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly of my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned, and done that which is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was born into iniquity, and I have been sinful since my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward being. Therefore teach me wisdom in my secret. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear with joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from death, O God. God of my salvation and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. Were I to give you burnt offerings, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. And now let us be in a meditative state and consider the peace of Christ that we pass to others. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks in this time. Thanks for this opportunity and time to refocus, to recommit, and to reimagine our lives with you. To wander down the journey as we move ourselves alongside Jesus to Jerusalem. As we journey into the city and into the inevitable end. But Lord, knowing the beginning that awaits on the other side. Lord, we give you thanks for this time to fast, to spiritually discipline ourselves, to re spark, rekindle, to re engage in our relationship with you. And Lord, to build it stronger than it ever has been, so that we can continue to grow in your grace and love. Lord, humble us in your sight, that we may be your servants and disciples in this world. And Lord, let us see the face of your Son, our Savior, as we seek to do your work. And Lord, now let us pray the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us join in our closing hymn this evening, Lord, I want to be a Christian.
gathered and entered into this holy season. As we journey these next uh, six weeks, we are going to be entering into a new worship series, which uh, I am a, a little excited about. We are going to be looking at covenants that God makes throughout the Old Testament. We're going to work our way through some Old Testament passages that focus on this theme of covenant. Covenant, which is a pact between God and humanity. And looking at the various ways in which the nature of God is revealed through these covenants, leading up to our celebration, our Holy Week celebration, in which we will explore the new covenant that Christ places before us at the communion table. And so I invite you to come along on this journey as we, uh, as we go and move ourselves with Jesus towards the cross in this Lenten season. And I invite you to invite other people to join us as we go through this time. I invite you to share uh, our worship services, our Facebook page, so that others can journey this journey along with us. And I encourage you to keep that Lenten discipline and to grow and to strengthen your love and grace in God's spirit and your love and grace for God's creation. And now let us close our worship service, reminding ourselves of the covenant we make with God as we pray together the Wesley Covenant Prayer. And then I will offer us a benediction. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant now made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Amen. And now go forth from this space and this time. Remembering you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And that yet even now, turning to God's grace, we live in God's love and show God's love. Amen.